Today, Ottawa Walks takes you in search of Jerry Barber. Jerry Barber was a manager of several nightclubs in the Gatineau area, though he's probably best remembered for being the bouncer at these clubs. Over the years, there have been many, many stories about him. One of the more famous ones is his encounter with the Satan's Choice. In 1978, Jerry Barber told journalist Earl McRae the story. Must have been 20 of them. I got my back to the wall. With a gang, anything goes. Boots, chairs, bottles, chains. Took me half an hour that time. I admit, I had two waiters helping me. I got the leader, big guy too. Knocked him cold, picked him up, threw him across the room. The others gave up. Get the leader, and they quit. Yeah, there's plenty of crazy stories about Jerry Barber, and they'll probably get crazier as the years go by. But just who was Jerry Barber? Jerry Barber was born Gerald Emmett Barber on August 14, 1929, at the Civic Hospital in Ottawa. He grew up on Clarence Street in Ottawa's Lower Town, with his six brothers and two sisters. In that era, many people referred to Clarence Street as the Barber Street. In fact, the Barber family has a long and fascinating history in Ottawa. Jerry's grandfather, Paul Barber, was an ex-slave and one of Ottawa's first black settlers. By all accounts, he was a sophisticated and cultured man known for his skill with horses. In fact, in 2016, a street in Ottawa's lower town was renamed in Paul Barber's honor. Jerry's father, Paul Barber Jr., was a well-known newspaper vendor, working at the corner of Bank and Sparks for nearly 50 years, selling newspapers to regular customers like Prime Ministers R.B. Bennett and William Lyon Mackenzie King. Newspaper accounts during Paul Barber Jr.'s life tell stories of him being an exceptionally brave man, which he would have had to have been to survive being a black man in Ottawa in those days. Few stories survive of Jerry Barber's childhood, but one interesting one can be found in a short newspaper article from the Ottawa Journal, dated November 15, 1943. The article tells the story of a gang of boys who, like the Hardy Boys, thwarted a purse snatcher. The end of the article names the Good Samaritans, including one Jerry Barber, 14 years old, and his younger brothers, Leo and Vincent. At 15 years old, to help support his family, Jerry left school and started working as a bouncer at the Astor Cafe in Bowles Lunch on Rideau Street. Afterwards, he served as a bodyguard at the Ottawa Auditorium for wrestlers Yukon Eric and Killer Clown Karlofsky. In 1961, he married Danielle Chartier, a French-Canadian. Together, they had a family of three boys, he also had two other children from a previous relationship. Jerry's probably best known for his years working at the Chaudier for the reclusive J.P. Maloney, a wealthy businessman who owned and operated several nightclubs in Western Quebec. The Chaudier Club, or the Chaud as it was known, sat alone on the road that led from Hull to Elmer on the Quebec side of the river across from Ottawa. The Chaud was built in the 1930s when it was home to some of the finest jazz and swing music of that era. Jerry worked at the Chaudière from the jazz era through the rock and roll era to the era of modern rock and new wave. Bands of those days used to complain about the cut that Jerry took from their earnings, though most of these bands would be very happy to be paid today what they got back then. When they were older, Jerry's three sons worked with him at the shop. Must have made for an interesting bring your kid to work day. Speaking outside of the building that once housed the Chaudière is his son, Jerry Jr., remembering those days. So what kind of stuff did he have to do in that job? Well, uh, anywhere from hiring bands, uh, hiring staff, uh, like waiters, extra uh, people, uh, to be able to run the place and stuff like that in general. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't easy. It, it was like uh, 
he, j he had a job and he had to do it very well. And um, he, um, it, at times he comes home with some scars and stuff like that. And it'd be, it'd some nights would be really rough, but it was, it was more good times than bad times. As Jerry Barber's reputation grew, there started being stories about him in all the Ottawa newspapers and national magazine profiles as well. And people started coming from all over just to take on Jerry Barber and show how tough they were. He survived attacks of knives, guns, bats, chains, crowbars, tire irons, meat cleavers, and a lot of other stuff. Jerry had his home bombed, he had his car smashed with sledgehammers, he changed his unlisted phone number often. He couldn't get life insurance, no big surprise there. His car insurance was stratospheric. Yeah, it wasn't easy being Jerry Barber. Okay, another Jerry Barber story. So one time this guy was being a complete idiot and Jerry goes over to him and he says, sit down and shut the f up back. The guy grabs a beer bottle and he breaks it over Jerry's head. Right away, a fight breaks out and the band, I kid you not, started playing the Batman theme song. Jerry grabs the guy and throws him over a couple tables. Then he picks him up by his belt and uses the guy's head to open the door and toss him into the parking lot. And then Jerry goes back to work like nothing happened. The band goes back to playing and we go back to drinking. But like a lot of people, Jerry Barber was much more than just his job. For 12 years, Jerry owned Danny's Used Furniture on Wellington Street in Hintonburg. Paul Barber, no relation, had a barber shop next to Jerry's store. In 2004, he told the Ottawa Citizen, it was always comforting knowing Jerry was working right next door. Jerry had a lot of good friends, one of whom was Joe McGovern, who also worked for J.P. Maloney and managed another nightclub, the Standish Hall. There's lots of photos of the two of them hanging out and having a good time together. Jerry was a big Ottawa Rough Riders fan and never missed a game if he could help it. Though he spoke limited French, Jerry almost became the president of the Institut Canadien Francais, a group that advocated on behalf of Franco-Ontarians. Many of its members had grown up with Jerry in Lower Town. He would have become the first non-French president of the club. Today, folks there still talk fondly of him. In fact, for every story about Jerry being a mean, tough SOB, there are stories of his kindness and generosity. Stories of him helping people with their rent, always picking up the tab when out with his friends, and supporting them when they were down on their luck. In retirement, he bought and helped run his family's marina at Wendover on the Ottawa River. On the night of May 27, 1984, Jerry was hanging out with his Lower Town buddies at the Institut Canadien Francais. He'd just finished a slow dance, strolled over to the bar, grabbed his chest, and fell to the floor and died. He was 54 years old. His funeral cortege trailed back more than a kilometer and required several police escorts to ease it through downtown traffic. By sad coincidence, his friend Joe McGovern passed away two hours before him. In December 1999, many years after Jerry's death, Ottawa Sun columnist Earl McRae held a poll with his readers to determine who was Ottawa's toughest man ever. Jerry Barber won, of course, no contest. Today, there's even a Facebook group dedicated to stories about Jerry Barber. Jerry's been gone many years now, and the shoddy air's gone now too, absorbed into a hotel complex. And it's unlikely that you'll ever read about Jerry Barber in the history books, but for those of us who were there at that time, no explanation, no mix of words or music or memories can touch the sense of knowing that we were there and alive in that corner of time in the world when Jerry Barber ruled the door at the shoddy air. Cause I've been drinking here since I was 16 and I'm here tonight with my new girlfriend So come on Jerry Barber, please let us in Hey Jerry Barber, won't you let us in? Cause I've been drinking here since I was 16 And I'm 
here tonight with my new girlfriend So thank you Mr. Barber for letting us in And we'll never see the likes of you again No we won't 